Hello everybody, welcome to episode 3. In this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to import and organize footage into Premiere Pro uh, to get started with your editing and whatnot. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about organizing your media before you import it into Premiere and creating folder structures and whatnot with your, with your, uh, on your hard drives. First of all, I've got an external hard drive plugged in here. This goes the same for Mac as well as PC. If you, uh, When you bring footage in, what I want to show here is a couple different types of footage. Uh, first of all, I would recommend when you copy footage from a something like a solid state drive, from like a RED camera or from a DSLR or other types of cameras, uh, instead of just going through and trying to find the clips on the folder, what you're going to do is grab the entire folder structure that's on the card and copy and paste it. Don't ever import footage directly from a flash drive into Premiere, because once you unplug that flash drive, your media will be gone. It will no longer be able to reference its media, the media. So outside of Premiere, within your folder, create a folder structure, like much like you see here. I've got uh, three different types of camera actually here. RED camera, Sony F3 camera, and a 5D Mark III. Uh, it was shot on the same commercial here. There was a folder that was created for the RED camera, and then we just grabbed it. There was only one card from the RED camera, so they copied and pasted the whole folder structure. Everything just went in on the, the solid state drive on the RED camera and hit Control A to select everything, or Command A on a Mac, like that. And then do Control C and Control V to paste it from the solid state drive into your new folder that you've created. If you have several card dumps from the same camera, uh, on the same day, if you have different days, you're going to organize these folders by doing a new folder and calling it Day 1. And then within that folder, you'll have to go in and create a folder called Red Camera. And then you'll, uh, and then after you get into that, you'll start naming for every single single card dump you have. You'll make a new folder called Card 1. Make a new folder Card 2, Card 3, Card 4. And then when you go into that card there, then you will paste the stuff from your card into this folder on your hard drive. That's usually the way that is organized here. With this shoot it was pretty simple. There was one card from the RED camera, one card from the DSLR camera, and one card from the Sony F3 camera. But as you see, we go into here. Notice the whole card has just been copied over. They just they didn't go in and try to find the clips like this in the individual folders and grab the clips and pay, copy and paste them. Premiere will sort a lot of that stuff out. What you need to do is just grab the entire card copy and paste it. And people are kind of tempted to do this with DSLR, but uh, sometimes DSLR cameras will contain a thumbnail file that will contain information uh, that accompanies the QuickTime file depending on how the camera is set up. Uh, the DP might have uh, set the camera to do a still image that contains all the metadata of that camera, what focal length was used, what f-stop and, uh, and uh, what shutter speed and all that information that's on the metadata that might, might need to be accessed. So once again I recommend just copying the entire contents of the folder on this on the 5D Mark III it's actually these two folders all together here and you copy and paste it into a new folder called card 1, card 2, card 3 so you have all those individual cards organized before you actually start importing and it's going to help you enormously once again do not go inside these folders and rename movie files don't go in and rename things in the red folder or in the DSLR folder you're going to be doing the renaming within Premiere and these are very unique coded names here with the camera basically with the life of the camera it will never rename any files the same name as it as, as has been previously used so it's just good to leave these these numbers alone and do the organization and renaming within Premiere okay let's show you how to import into Premiere there are like three or four different ways of importing in Premiere one of them is from your import window here I'm going to do tilde over this window and make it go full screen so you can kind of see what we're doing here probably one of the easiest ways is just from the import uh, media to start here you just double click in the window here double click in that it brings open an import window another way of doing that I just hit escape is control I it's basically the same thing control I is import it will do the exact same thing and another way is going up to file and import all three of those are basically the exact same way if you need a kind of a quick way just double click there you go and now I can navigate to my folder now this way of import this this import method works really well for DSLR footage It's a little bit different for red footage I'm going to get into that and some other types of footage that have a little bit more complex story structure that use like a fat 32 as a hard drive format for for their solid-state drives but I'm going to go under my footage here under raw dumps 5d mark 3 
And actually what we can do is we can just go into raw dumps. I can select, since this, everything's put right into that folder, I can just say import folder here. And it will import the DSLR footage. Once it's imported, if there's files that it do, does not understand, like some of those metadata files, you can just ignore that. Just completely ignore this, hit OK, and you'll find that the footage has been imported in that same folder name that I brought in. If I arrow this down, you'll see that it's got another folder that within the Mark uh, Mark III folder, you arrow that down, and then you'll see your footage. If you have JPEGs, this is these JPEGs contain some of the metadata. If you have those JPEGs, we can just double click on this and you can actually open it up in a free window and clear all your JPEGs out if you don't need them. So now you can just highlight the JPEGs, delete. And I'm going to show you a couple other different ways of importing here as well. So if you don't need the JPEGs, get rid of those. Now I've got all my movie files in there. One little thing here as far as the folder structure is concerned, if you got a folder within a folder like this, a quick way of getting rid of that is you can arrow these down like this. I collapse the folder or expand the folder. I'm going to grab all these clips right here and I'm just going to grab this and move it up to the 5D Mark III folder. Now this folder is empty. I can select that and delete it and my folder is organized there. There's my 5D Mark III footage. Another simple way of importing. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go to my Windows browser here. If you're on a PC or a Mac, you can open up your Finder or Explorer, your, your browser here, and you can just basically navigate through your folders here in a regular folder structure. I'm going to go to my raw dumps folder. I'm just going to grab this 5D Mark III and I'm going to kind of move this to the side so I have room to see my import folder here in Premiere. And you can just drag this and drop this in. Very simple way of importing footage just like that. And now I arrow this down and you'll notice I've got the exact, the exact same import that I had as before. So those are a few different ways of importing kind of regular DSLR footage. When it comes to red footage, and actually any footage for that matter, you can choose to use the media browser. The media browser works really well for red footage, especially footage that since red shoots on a, a FAT32 a universal uh, solid state card, it can only save files up to 4 gigabytes in size. So since it can only save up to 4, four gigabytes, sometimes it'll split one file into many different files and try to read it as as just one individual file. When one is finished, it's just playing the next one if your files end up being very long. So what I'm going to recommend doing for red footage is using the media browser because it will read all those individual files as if it's just one file, if it's just one shot, if that's the way it was shot on the red camera. So I'm going to recommend using this to import red footage and you can also use it to bring in DSLR and audio, but I kind of like the basic folder way that I just showed for DSLR footage. So what I'm going to do here is find my username once you find a location, you can add it under your favorites here. If you just pull this down and go home directory, this little arrow here, and go home directory, it will show up, bring up all the um, the user home directory folders uh, that you're logged into. So now I can actually go to my desktop. I can go to hard drives. If you have stuff on your desktop, that's kind of the easy way to find it. Otherwise, I'm just going to go under my local drives here, go into a folder. And by the way, if you want to select these folders over here, you can arrow right and it will expand the folder. Arrow left will collapse it and arrows up and down will jump between, uh, will, will go up and down the, the folder structures here, the structure here and find the new folders. So I'm just going to, I've got this folder right here. I'm going to arrow over to the right to open it up. I'm going to move down to my raw dumps folder, arrow right, go down to my red camera and, the, and arrow right move down. I'm going to move this over a little bit so I can see a little bit more. And once I get down to the red folder that was dumped in here, boom, it brings up all these clips here. And these are all the clips in my red folder. So I'm going to select all these files here. It'll create thumbnails out of those. I'm going to click all those files. Uh, all the files that you want to import, you can actually hold down control and select individual files like this. You'll see all these, these ones are selected here. Or you can do control A and select all. Or you can select the first, hold down shift and select a range. Uh, very similar to just choosing file structures uh, on, a, on a regular uh, computer browser with your shift and control functions. But right now I'm going to hit Command A, select everything. I'm going to right click on these clips and just say import. Go back to my project and notice these are all imported now. I've got all my red footage in here. I'm going to, to delete those and show you in a couple other things here. I'm going to create a folder to start some organization. I'm going to go down to my new bin here. This new bin item icon down in the bottom right hand corner here. If you click on that, it will create a folder and you can organize media and your import folders as well, in your uh, project area as well. So I'm going to rename this. And a simple way to rename these things is to select it, hit return, 
and it highlights it. Now you can just start typing. I'm going to call this red footage. I'm going to make another one here. By the way, a shortcut to create a new bin is control uh, forward slash, which is right next to the, the right shift key. So control slash or command slash uh, creates a new folder. Uh, and I'm going to call this DSLR footage. There we go. Now I want to go to my media browser and s import footage directly into this red footage folder. All you have to do is select the folder. Whatever I, I select from to import from the media browser will automatically go to the selected folder here. So media browser, right click, import. Go back to my import footage, arrow this down, and you'll notice all my red footage has been imported into the red footage. I'm going to go to my DSLR footage, go to media browser, 5D Mark III. This is where my media is found. I'm just going to double click on this, double click on this, and find my files. As I showed before, I've got a bunch of, I've got a JPEGs and I've got movie files. I just want to see the movie files within this folder. You go down to this little funnel here and you can tell it, tell, you can tell this to display just specific types of files. DSLR footage is actually MPEG footage. I can select this and say, well, you can tell it just to show JPEGs. There are my JPEGs. And click on this and tell it to show MPEG movies, my movie files. And there are my movie files without the JPEGs. So now I'm going to select all these. Now I'm going to select all these, Control A, uh, and I've got my DSLR footage browser or uh, folder selected. Go back to my media browser, right click and import. One thing I need to do here is I've still got JPEG selected, so I'm going to uncheck JPEG. There we go. And now it just shows the movie files. I'm going to uh, hit Control A, right click and import, and it brought in just my movie files. Oops, I did not have my DSLR sele folder selected, so I'm going to undo select the footage and actually what I could do here instead let me bring that back is you can just grab this and move it over but whatever folder you have selected it will import it into that folder and and now I want to show a little bit of organization I'm going to make one more folder I'm going to call this F3 for my Sony F3 footage I'm going to select that I'm going to go to media browser I'm going to find my F3 footage and here's all my F3 footage control A right click import and it has put it in my F3 folder. Okay, I want to show a little bit of organization here since uh, f from our import footage. I want to show a little bit of uh, organization here from our little project window. Uh, first of all, I showed you how to create folders uh, to organize f footage and organize uh, audio files and JPEGs, whatever you're organizing here. But I also want to show how to move files around if you want something out of a folder and getting things prepared for editing. First of all, like I said, if there's folders within folders here, let me go into this and we're going to divide the F3 folder into a couple of different folders here. I'm going to double click on this. Actually, let's do it from the red footage because I know I've got different shots in there. I'm going to double click on this. It opens up this free floating window. I'm going to open this up a bit. I'm going to tell this to show down here you've got list view, which shows in the view that you see here, or icon view. Icon view will pull up a little icon of every little clip. Say I want to grab all this kind of mountain stuff and put it in one folder and the guy with the glasses and put him in another folder within the red folder. So I'm going to create two folders. I'm going to hit control slash or command slash and the slash once again is right next to the right shift key. And I'm going to say mountains. And also I'm going to create one more folder, control slash, and I'm going to call this glasses. There we go. So I've got two different folders within my red footage folder and I've got all these clips. I can grab a range of clips here, select this first one, hold down shift and select the last one here and it selects this range. Now you just simply grab these, drag them and hover over till it highlights the entire folder like so and you let go and it's put those all in that folder. I'm going to grab the rest of these glasses, drag those to the glasses, oops, grab those and drag them down to the glasses, hold, hover over it till it's highlighted the whole folder, and let go. Here's some more mountains. I'm going to grab those and stick them in my mountain folder. And there we go. And now those are organized. If I double click on the mountain folder, it has all those clips in the mountain. If I double click on the glasses, it has the glasses. There we go. So now from your project window, this is just my own personal preference, but I prefer to have uh, my project window in list view almost at all times. 
Uh, it's very confusing to kind of work out out of the um, project window in icon view because it's just showing these folders here. It's best to show it in less view, in my opinion. Now, if you want to open up another folder and start editing, say, red footage or DSLR footage, uh, what you can do here, say we want to access the DSLR footage. If you double click, it'll open up this free floating window here that kind of can kind of get in the way of your editing. So what I'm going to recommend doing is holding down your alt key and double clicking on one of these folders. It'll open up the folder in its own bin. When you alt double click, it doesn't do a free floating window, it opens it up in its own bin. And actually I'm going to grab these. I like these kind of close together, so I'm going to grab my project and I'm going to move it right next to my bin right there so they're they're close together. There we go. So I've got a DSLR footage bin my regular project bin and I'm going to open up my red footage as well. Actually let's open up this and arrow this down. I'm going to grab my glasses, alt double click, opens it up in its own bin or its own tab, mountains double click, go back to my project and go to my F3 and double click. Okay, so now I've got my project window that has the original structure of the folders and then I've got these folder tabs here with all the clips in it. But some of these are still in list view. I like to have my project tab in list view and my bins in icon view for the most part. So I'm going to make sure that all these are in icon view. There we go. And now once you're in icon view here, if you want to change the size of these icons, you can just grab this little slider down here, make these larger, and get ready for the editing portion. couple last items here. First of all, I want to show you how to rename footage. I mentioned you don't ever rename the footage uh, in the in the of the movie files in the folder name. Just I want to reemphasize that. Don't ever go to the actual file structure and rename these files in here for your folder names or your file names. Don't ever do that. It'll screw things up. So what you're going to do is bring, once you bring them in Premiere and it's referencing this name here on your file, you can rename these in Premiere. You can hit you can select the clip, you can hit return which highlights the name and now you can name this shirt whatever you want to name it. I hit return and it automatically goes to the next file and asks what I want to name this and you can take your mouse and scrub over these clips to see what they are. I'm not I'm not clicking anything I'm just moving my mouse left and right over the clip and it's showing the clip here. I'm going to call this face glasses hit return goes to the next one. I can scrub through this here I'm going to call this face glasses too there you go. Then once you get through renaming this, if you notice, I'm going to right click on this file here and I'm going to tell it to reveal an explorer. And then on a Mac this would be reveal and finder. I'm going to reveal an explorer, it'll open it up in the Windows Explorer and it will show the original file name right there and there it is. It still has that original red file name right there. And it doesn't and it does not reflect the name that I named in Premiere. Premiere is referencing this file and renaming it as such in Premiere. So once again, don't ever change these file names here. Change them in Premiere, and it will never, and it will leave the original files intact. Okay, once you are inside of Premiere here, and say you're trying to find one of those uh, face glasses footage here, you can go to your project window, and what you can do is just get, go up this little search window here, and you're trying to find file, a certain file. I can type in glass. Just start typing in glass, and it'll bring up all the files that have the name face glasses, or just glass has G-L-A-S is what I typed in. Uh, it'll show the folders where they're located and then you can access those those files if you need. And lastly I just want to show this little item right here. This is all your metadata for your individual clips here. And uh, you have different things like frame rate and uh, your media start time code, media end, and when you've set in and out points and video duration, how long the clip is, resolution, a whole bunch of different items there. If you want to change any of these and add any metadata to uh, to display on those individual clips, you can right click up here on the on this metadata display bar and hit metadata display and you can go through and check mark things that you want to actually show up in that bar up there. I'd say just kind of explore this and see if there are things that you need to have shown. It has all kind of the basics of the clip properties up here already, but if there are things you need to add in here like uh, real numbers and other things, you can actually go in and tell it to, to display those. And you can actually make new schemes based on the clip properties. You can add property and this gets a little complex, but uh, those are the basics of importing media. If you have any questions, please post any questions on, on the comments below and uh, good luck.